or his dependents, his creatures. He loves what he created. And he's merciful to everyone, not just to us. And the Prophet وسلم, immediately upon arrival in Medina, the third thing he did, he brought the Muhajireen and the Ansar, the immigrants, the refugees, and those who are established in Medina, the Ansar. And he did the Mu'akha, the brotherhood. So the only way really to solve our problem today, our crisis today, and we have nine million refugees today. If everybody says, take one person, he's my brother now, and I'm gonna share with him. We will solve this problem. There is enough resources to go around for everybody. The Prophet said the food of two people is enough for three. And the food of four is enough for five. We all can pitch in and share and absorb this crisis. And this fight over resources has produced nothing but misery for the world. It costs more to be in this state of destruction and chaos. And I want to conclude with this. Unless we, the Muslims, who have this guidance from Allah in the Quran and from his Prophet وسلم, in his life to show us how he dealt with it and how he fixed it. And in a very short time, in extremely short time, he was able to unify all the Arab tribes, 360 tribes in Arabia, which includes today Saudi so Arabia and the Gulf countries in Yemen. And within three, four years later, it spread into the entire Middle East. The power and the light of this message, a message of love, a message of brotherhood, a message of unity, a message of mercy, overcomes all the other messages and ideologies. Nazism failed. All the movement towards division and sectarianism have failed, will fail. Eventually, they will fail. Apartheid will fail. And any country, and any government, and any party, and any group of human beings who call for that, they eventually going to fail. And what will prevail is when we love each other, unity across nations and diverse groups. And Allah gave us many, many lessons in the Quran about that. So the work is left on us. We have the book. We have the guidance. We are charged with this mission to go out and bring people. We are the ones who are expected to lead not to follow failed plans, but to come up with a successful plan, like the one the Prophet ﷺ did, carried out, and brought millions of people, hundreds of nations and tribes, under the umbrella of brotherhood and love in Islam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على خير البشر نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. When we remember the hijra of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and why historians consider it the most significant event in history is because it changed the world and for the first time one man brought this message and changed the world from divided world at war to a united world at peace. 
a champion for brotherhood, for mercy. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not need to migrate for himself. He was wealthy. He could have lived and be the, the chief of Mecca, the king of Mecca. But his message was beyond himself and his tribe and the Arabs, his message for the world. Rahmatan lil alameen. The hijrah should not be seen as, oh, the event of him leaving Mecca, going to Medina. So what? But what came out of that most significant event? How it became a turning point in history, and how in a very short time afterwards, the world becomes united. The wars, the wars stop. The killing, the bloodshed ceases. That is what we learn from our history, from learning the Prophet's life. And we don't want to just look at it and say, MashaAllah, it was wonderful. It is for us to bring it back. It's for us to follow the same path. The path of love, the path of service, the path of mercy, compassion, brotherhood. Open up our hearts and minds. Do not let the shaitan divide us and hurt us. You're not going to have a friend. You're not going to have a good neighbor. You're not going to have a good customer if they feel in you that you don't like them. You go to people that offer you love and offer you inclusion make you part of them, their family. So let's each one of us open up, include others, and be like our Prophet wasallam, a mercy to the world. Let's lead by example and not sit and count why we have all these reasons to hate other people based on their religion or race or color or they did this or did that. That will never end. Let's take it in a totally new direction and say, it doesn't matter what you have done and how you think about me and how much you hate me, I will love you and I will go with you. And believe me, before too long, we can rescue this world out of the abyss. We are teetering on World War III. And we have all this responsibility as Muslims to turn this ship around. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose you to do this hard work. It's not easy. It's the most difficult world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide humanity out of the darkness to the light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to be the true leaders that humanity is waiting for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Forgive us for our shortcomings, for our ill feelings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take care of the widows and the orphans and the needy around the world who are in need of help today. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Fil alamina innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ردنا وجميع المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لاتباع كتابك وسنة نبيك اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم كن معنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم كما سألك عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم كما استعاذ بك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
اللهم إنا نسألك رضوانك والفردوس الأعلى من الجنة وصحبك